This is Andy Purawal for Boxing Social in association with Betfred. And I'm del delighted to be joined by rising heavyweight talent, Johnny Fisher over Zoom. Johnny, how are you? I'm good, thanks, Andy. How are you? I'm all good, mate. I'm all good. Um, good to catch up and obviously talk some heavyweight boxing. We saw last night Joe Joyce returns to the ring with a sixth round stoppage win against Carlos Takam. Johnny, what did you make of his win? Yeah, I think it went uh, the way a lot of people thought it would go. Um, Joe Joyce coming into it second half or like the, the early stages of the second half of the, of the fight. Takam started fast, got some good work in and he's, he's a very tough, credible opponent. And Joe weathered that storm the way he does. I know uh, Takam landed some good shots, but He's very, very tough, Joe Joyce, and I could see Takam beginning to tire um, from the edge of the ring. I could see he just his body language he was, was still good. He was still in the fight, obviously, but um, he just started beginning to tire, and Joe Joyce would only get stronger throughout that fight. So I just thought it was going to be a matter of time. Obviously, over social media, the question's been asked, was it the right decision? Was it premature? The majority do seem to believe and back that it was the right decision. Uh, listening to you there, you agree with that, that it was the right decision to stop the fight? Yeah, I definitely believe it was. Caught him with a nice a nice little combination. But um, Takam wasn't firing back for about 30 seconds. And if it did go on and Joe Joyce does finish him emphatically, the referee gets in trouble and everyone would have been saying, why did the ref let that go on? Because he didn't throw back. So the right decision was made in my eyes. Johnny, just how much of an impressive performance in your eyes um, was that from Joe? Or did you see kind of faults in his performance? There's always faults in everyone's performance. But listen, Carlos Takem is a tough world-level contender. He caused Joshua trouble. He caused uh, uh, Chisora some trouble as well in a great fight. He's a, he's a, he's a world-level contender. And Joe Joyce has stopped him in the, was it the sixth round. Yeah. He stopped him in the sixth round. So he's on to he's onto the big big boys now. Hopefully, you get that that world title shot. That's what we were hoping for. Great performance to beat someone like Carlos Takam, who's who's been in there with the best and giving them good fights. Johnny, one thing people picked up on and, and commented on was some of the punches that were being landed on Joe. There was questioning if, say, it was an Anthony Joshua or more of an even more established leading heavyweight in the division that he may not have been able to just shrug them off. He may have been a bit more damaging to him on the night. Do you agree with that? Do you think Joe got caught a little bit too easily at times? Yeah, sometimes Joe does get caught, caught a bit easily, but the whole one of his main assets is his chin and his strength and his, his ability to weather storms. We saw that with Daniel Dubois. I don't think there's many bigger punches out there than Daniel Dubois. And he's been caught. He got caught with four or five of them in a row and he, he just kept coming forward. Obviously, you don't want to get caught by them shots and that's something you can tighten up. But part of Joe's game is that he's this big, horrible heavyweight who will just keep coming forward, keep coming. And yeah, listen, Joshua will be a great test, Wild or someone like that, or Tyson Fury. But these are the top guys. Once you're in with these top guys, you're there. And he's got a great chance, as good a chance of anyone to beat these guys. I was going to say, Johnny, in your eyes, how do you think he would fare against one of those names, especially knowing he's WBO number one and the mandatory two? Yeah. I think... Uh, I think Joyce would be too strong. If I'm just summarising quickly in my head, uh, Joyce is too strong for Usyk overall. And I think he gives Anthony Joshua a good fight. I think um, Anthony Joshua is someone, huge power, great strength. But Joe Joyce can match that strength. And he's got that he's got that relentlessness that can cause someone like Anthony Joshua a problem. So, listen, no one's saying it's an easy fight because Anthony Joshua is a world champion, one of the best of the era. So, we've just got to... Uh, just got to hope and pray it comes off and Joe gets one of them big shots. I mean, AJ Usyk just on that front, coming up now, September 25th, the official date. As a fellow heavyweight, Johnny, what do you make of it? Yeah, brilliant. Brilliant to see. Obviously, we've had the frustration of the Wilder Fury fight being pushed back. Um, we was lucky enough to see a nice heavyweight fight uh, last night. And Fury, AJ Usyk's another great fight that we can get, get ready for, not too far away. And um, I think in my in my head, Anthony Joshua is the favourite in that one just because of his size. And but I wouldn't be surprised if Usyk comes away with a win because he's a great boxer and he's an Olympic gold medalist himself. So I'm intrigued to see how it's going to go. But if I was put money on it, I'd put it on Anthony Joshua. Uh, Johnny, um, just to kind of loop back to Joe Joyce, I know you were sparring him in the build up to uh, this most recent fight. Just talk to me about that. Reflect on the sparring with Joe. Yeah, me and Joe always get good quality working. I remember when we couple of years ago when I first started with Joe and I was doing two rounds in jumping out because I was just expending too much energy and Joe was far too experienced for me but I was giving him good rounds and good quality work but now we do six rounds even eight rounds we can we can work together and 
if it weren't for Joe, I wouldn't have been developing the way I am. So I'm just grateful for the help he's given me. He's such a nice, such a nice bloke as well. Like so down to earth, not not arrogant in any way. And when we spar, we we spar with respect, but we spar with aggression, and we we spar to help bring each other on. And we're really in that stage now where we can develop each other. It's not just him trying to help me. Johnny, I know Alan Babbage was also over, and he sparred with Joe. Did you guys ever cross paths do any sparring, or did you see him sparring with Joe? No, I didn't. I didn't see the sparring uh, that week. But I've met Alan. I met him when we was at the Matchroom uh, uh, press conference when we was announcing all the dates and things like that. And it was brilliant. He's he's a top bloke, and he's really exciting for all the fans. And he's a genuine guy when you meet him as well. He's got his uh, he's got his market as well. With what he wants to do now, he's exciting people, and it's great for us all to watch. So. I'm really excited to see where Babbage goes as well. And I heard his spy with Joe Joyce was, was lively as well. Uh, Johnny, just moving forwards with yourself. Josh Sandland, August 7th. How's preparations been going away from obviously the sparring with Joe? Yeah, it was Josh Sandland, but obviously Josh Sandland to pull out. It's now Danny Whittaker. Um, and listen, another credible opponent, winning record. Um, fought for an area title in his last fight. So, um, listen, it's a tough test and I've got to be ready. And it's two weeks yesterday, so... All the preparation's nearly done. One or two more spars this week and I'll, I'll be ready to go. I'll be ready to go if I needed to fight tomorrow. But we've got another week of preparation and we'll start tapering down and we've got to do the business on the August 7th. So on to Danny Whittaker then, because I, I, I don't know whether I missed it or I just haven't seen an announcement. So I apologise for that, Johnny. Um, but with Danny Whittaker being a man now come August 7th, how have your preparations changed? Well, it was, I've, I, it's changed a little bit because obviously... Josh Sandlin's a smaller opponent, a bit more ducker and diver, but Mark Tibbs has been analysing Danny Whitaker and we've been we've been doing technique work and instructions and sparring accordingly. And um, not much has changed because you've still got to get your sparring in, you've still got to get your, your boxing training in and you've still got to get your fitness work in. So it's still the same goal and we've still got to get the same result when it comes on the 7th of August. Johnny, are you confident of, of winning by stoppage? I know you're going to back yourself to win, but are you confident you'll be able to get inside the distance? I'm not bothered about whether it's a stoppage or not, if I'm being honest. I just want to win my fights. I showed on my debut that I've got that one-punch power where I can put, put people over. So, for me, it's not about the pressure of that. More importantly for me is to get the win and try and look a bit more stylish because I know I've got style. I know I can box. I know I can I know I know can move. I've shown it inspiring. It's just translating that now into, into the boxing ring and the boxing match and not getting carried away which I know I can do because the more experienced I get, the more I can do that. It's an interesting point you raised there. You mentioned how you know how you can perform in sparring. He's just trying to convert it into yeah. a actual fight in the ring. Why do you think it is, in your case, you haven't been able to? I know in other fighters' cases, when they mention, you know, Dave Allen, the perfect example, he always used to say, inspiring, he looked brilliant. In training, he looked brilliant. But then he just couldn't quite bring that into the, the top-level fights that he had uh, during his career so far. into the ring. So for you, why, why do you feel like you need to try and work on that? I think for me, it's because I've only had two professional fights and I've only had 10 amateur fights. So the experience of being in the ring and going in there, doing it again and again and again, that's something you've got to work up. And that's why it takes when people, when you get fans moaning about boxers taking fights, oh, he's, he's eight and oh, he's nine and oh, he's not fought anyone yet. Well, that's part of that is because some boxers have to take that time to adjust to the experience levels you need to be a professional boxer. That doesn't mean I won't have tests along the way because Daddy Whitaker himself is a tough test. But what it, what it means is that some people take a bit, they take longer to than others to feel that relaxed nature. And for me, I think that's that's going to be the case. And I'm getting more relaxed every single time I fight. And it's brilliant. It's brilliant to be in that position. And it helps that you've got someone like Mark Tibbs in your corner giving you instructions. Johnny, just to, to move forward with your card. Um, Sorry. That's it. Sorry, it's coming it's back okay. on that. <laughs> Uh, Johnny, to move forwards with the card on August 7th, obviously Fabio Wardley, Nick Webb and a fellow heavyweight clash. What do you make of it? Yeah, it's a great, honest, domestic British level fight and I'm really excited to watch it. Fabio, I've been sparring quite frequently for this camp. Always looks in impressive shape, always looks ready to go. He's got an awkward, unique sort of style, but he's got to be, he's got to be on his game because Nick Webb, is, he can punch, he's a big unit and we've seen what he can do. So um, I'm just excited to watch. It's, a, it's going to be an honest fight. And I would be back in Fabio Woodley, not just because I've been sparring him, but I just think he's got that that unique skill set. And one other fight which has just been mentioned, some back and forth between the pair of them over social media, Dillian White and Charles Martin. Would you be interested to see that one down the line, uh, Johnny? 
I've always watched, I'm always interested in heavyweight fights, but there's more interesting fights to be made than that, I would say, in my opinion. But um, Charles Martin obviously made a bit of a storm about four or five years ago when he was fighting Josh, Joshua, and he's he's making a little resurgence, which is good to see. But I think there's more impressive fights for Dillian White out there um, at world level. Johnny, that is that. Oh. We will leave that there now. Leave it to enjoy the rest of your Sunday. I appreciate your time today. Thank you, Speed to Boxing no. Social. No problem. Thanks a lot, Andy. Thanks for speaking to me. Enjoy the rest of your day as well. Yeah.